Horizons is a program that was begun in the 1980s uh, and it is focused on Central and South America where the U.S. military deploys down here to conduct humanitarian assistance missions. The mission of New Horizons 2015 was really in three parts. There was engineering, there was medical, and there was humanitarian. For the engineering side, we built a schoolhouse and we drilled two wells for the local communities. On the medical side, we provided operating room support and emergency room support at the local hospital in Trujillo, as well as a vector-borne disease uh, engagement in the Tocoa area. And on the humanitarian side, we had our civil affairs team from the Army uh, conducting engagements throughout the local area, as well as opp other opportunities where New Horizons personnel were able to get involved in humanitarian outreach efforts. Uh, New Horizons 2015, we were tasked with building a school on um, the Gabriel Mistral School Grounds. What we did was we built a uh, two-classroom, two-bathroom school with a septic tank uh, on, uh, on the school ground. The, uh, the school itself was 1,400 square feet of uh, classrooms and the, uh, the bathrooms included. We were also tasked with building a pump house to uh, house the pump at the well that they built uh, to protect it from the elements. Once we came in, we put a bed down yard, we put rock down, we had the trailers, all the tools and equipment get put down on the uh, bed down rock. We had all the, uh, the cement delivered, started getting block orders, so uh, everything was pre-staged. We placed down that first course of block, laid out where everything was supposed to go, the, the doors, the windows, all the plumbing, and we started our vertical construction pretty much instantly after arriving. We started putting in vertical reinforcement, our rebar. Um, every four courses, we ended up core filling the, uh, the block um, all the way around the school. Once we got up to 10 courses, um, that was when we uh, started doing the lentils, um, the window lentils, the door lentils. Uh, pouring concrete, we had to mix everything ourselves. We couldn't get a pump truck. We ended up mixing ourselves by hand and using our mortar mixers. Uh, after that, we had uh, some more block and we ended up putting the bond beam all the way around the school. That's what would uh, support the roof itself, the trusses. Once we got the trusses in, uh, the roofing panel went up. Uh, at that point, we had our septic tank going at the same time as our block. So at that point, we had our crane come in, put the lids on top of the septic tank and that completed the septic tank work. Once we were done with that, we started installing all the finishing work, so toilets, and sinks, doors, windows, uh, the classroom partitions themselves that would separate the two classrooms. So we had uh, painting go on after all those finishing work. We painted the two other schools, painted the gazebos that were already on site, and then our school as well. Once we were done with uh, pretty much all that, we did the, the last of the finishing work, so bathroom partitions we painted. We cleared out all the leftover material, all the leftover rock, and put it around the school. We installed a walkway from the old school to the new school, as well as a patio. Um, once all that was done, we had our uh, ribbon cutting ceremony, and that concluded the mission. Our overall mission for uh, New Horizons was to drill and produce two active wells for the local Hondurans get them a good quality drinking water. Once you get your site survey completed, do the site setup with all the um, wheel drilling rig, and then also our drilling fluids tank. We'll uh, start mixing our mud, prepping. You let that aerate for 24 hours, so that way you're getting the proper viscosity through your mud. As you drill down through, that mud's gotta be spot on or you're taking a chance of your hole sloughing in off you and collapsing and then all of a sudden you could lose all your drill bit, your drill string, that could fail on you. But So that way your drill clues are good and set. Then you're just drilling down through, taking your uh, core samples as you drill through to find that first aquifer. Then going down farther till you hit your target depth in that second aquifer. And then once you complete that, 
you know where you need to set your screen and casing. Your screens are what's going to allow the water to filter in through your natural flow in there into the well. And then once you get your screens and casing set to your target depth, then you're going to put materials outside your casing and screens. You're going to use a filter pack material, which is pretty much similar to beach sand, but a little more coarse. Then above that, you use a special chemical called a hole plug. That puts a barrier between your filter pack and then your next material, which is grout, which is just a uh, slurry mix Portland cement. And that will seal it all the way to the top of your casing. And that'll prevent any type of runoff, anything that could get into your well and contaminate your overall aquifer. Once you have that all sealed up, you're gonna do a, just a nice uh, well seal on top with a sanitary concrete pad around it. We set our pump motor in the aquifer to the drop pipe to the top and uh, sealed it off with our well seal and then that completed our mission for both wells. Uh, during New Horizons 2015 our mission medically was to take care of our troops as a primary mission. Our secondary mission was at a local hospital, Dr. Salvador Paredes Hospital, where we were working inside the emergency room and then also uh, surgeons were here doing surgeries as well. So I'll run you through a typical pa uh, patient case if we had somebody injured at a job site. We have uh, IDMTs there, which are individual duty medical technicians. There's EMTs. We also have paramedics that will stabilize the patient. They'll contact myself either at the, the, uh, the pri our primary site or at the hospital if I'm working in the ER, and they'll transport that patient back to the hospital. At that point, we'll stabilize further in the emergency room, and then from the emergency room, we'll take the patient to uh, surgery if needed, or we'll contact International SOS and have the patient medevac uh, to a regional facility where they can get uh, further stabilization. Overall, the number of cases we've seen here at Dr. Salvador Paredes were uh, we've encountered 673 to 675 patients in the emergency room. Uh, we were able to help Hondurans in that way, uh, take a lot of load off the staff, who was very appreciative, and we were able to develop a, a synergy effect with them and learn from them, and they were able to learn from us as well. Uh, the surgical team here was able to do 150 uh, cases plus consults combined. So in total, uh, we've had over uh, 800 patients combined between the surgical team and the, and the emergency medical team, uh, which has been a, a, a great benefit to, to the uh, nation of Honduras. We work hand in hand with the general surgeon here in Trujillo, the local surgeon, um, where she'll screen the cases and we'll all work side by side with her. Um, as well as uh, do other cases. It's a pretty wide breadth of surgeries at this point, um, anywhere from an amputation to a, a classic hernia repair or a uh, cholecystectomy, a, gall a gallbladder surgery. An MFAS team is a surgical unit um, designed to uh, take care of any trauma uh, in the field. It's a unit that's basically deployable to about anywhere. We set up uh, on-site quote-unquote hospital with um, multiple components including a general surgeon, uh, orthopedic surgeon, an ER physician, as well as an anesthesiologist as well as surgical techs and provide you know, a broad range of trauma support. We're here to help. We're here to work with them um, in, in the areas that are important to them. So namely malaria, dengue, chikungunya, these diseases are prevalent and in some cases are growing in these areas. And so here they see a problem in their communities, but yeah, they see the Americans and the Ministry of Health tag teaming to take care of that problem. I think it's excellent. Our team did a fantastic job. Um, they were stretched in some areas that don't normally, they don't normally function in day in, day out in their jobs back on home station, but would very likely be the areas that they would be working in in deployed environments. So here is a great opportunity for our team to grow, um, be stretched a little bit, but at the same time um, provide a, a benefit to the host nation as we assess some of, the air, some of the areas that they're having problems and issues with, providing them recommendations, providing them some low, um, low cost, easy, um, actionable items that they can start working on now, but then um, maybe a way, providing some resources to them as a way forward. That's something that they get, that's the benefit they receive right here and right now. But in the future, our findings will be used by the U.S. Navy, by JTF Bravo, the Army, um, as they do medical engagements, but also the United States Air Force as we continue to work with the people in this region. Gracias 
Civil Affairs, we're the eyes and the ears of the combatant commander or the task force commander and what a civil, civil affairs, civil matters uh, respect. Our whole goal is to meet with the populace and make sure they understand what's going on and further build that partnership with them as well as the civil governance in the area. It's very important because it helps uh, to develop and uh, understand uh, the civilian domain, how people uh, behave in front of any military, uh, military operation. Well, everything that we gather is then analyzed. Um, if there are any concerns, we try and address those concerns. We talk to the people and let them know maybe why something is happening or if we can make modifications, then we do. For the last couple of weeks, we worked to coordinate a humanitarian uh, assistance um, item drop in uh, three different communities in the Trujillo uh, uh, municipality. Uh, we collected around 2,000 pounds of humanitarian aid between food and different items that can be used for the locals. And we uh, obtained a donation for an NGO, a local uh, NGO in Honduras, and other items uh, donated by Air Force South. Uh, we donated over 1,500 pounds of uh, some uh, foodstuffs, rice, beans, soy protein, and we donated around 200 pairs of shoes to different schools. We donated around 1,500 tote bags and around 500 backpacks and 500 work jobs to the local communities in Honduras at one, in Ocotes Altos, and uh, Brisas del Mar. We received five tons of medical supplies that will be used by our surgeons and our ER team down at the local hospital to provide care to the local Hondurans. Once we leave, we'll also be leaving whatever is left for the Hondurans to continue to use. So first and foremost, these supplies that you see behind me and over here to the side, they were uh, requested as part of our primary mission here. Uh, this equipment that we are using, we've basically the general surgeon has used these before, um, but they don't have these, this equipment. Um, and so to offer this equipment during normal surgeries for them has been a, um, a great assistance. It's, it's speeding up surgeries. It's, it's offering them decreased, uh, in, you know, decreased time to healing, uh, better infection rates. Uh, it's just a, it's a better process, a cleaner process for them. We face a number of challenges during New Horizons Honduras. Uh, the weather, it's, it's hot and humid here, and the first month of the exercise it was pretty rainy, so that impacted things at the job site. It was pretty muddy, and, uh, and it was tough getting vehicles and equipment in and out of there, but those were things we were able to overcome. Uh, materials was another one, and, a, and supplies, both for on the construction side and on the medical side. We thought ahead of all the things we knew we were going to have to bring from the states that weren't available here, but even when we got here there were some materials uh, that, we, that weren't what we expected, so we had to work around that. So there were a number of challenges that we had to overcome. We were impeded maybe the first two or three weeks due to you know, the septic tank getting flooded and the rainwater coming down. We weren't able to pour our pads. Getting materials was maybe our other um, impedance. It was, it was a little hard to find those materials in country, the exact ones that we needed, so we had to improvise a couple times and kind of design on the fly in order to get the building up the way we did. Both of them gave us many challenges, different geology. Our first challenge with the first well was we hit a very hard overall geology with a molten magma lava rock. It produced many challenges trying to drill through that to get to the good aquifer and uh, produce that good amount of water, where the second well was much easier. Uh, the challenges that we expected when we came down here were having issues uh, transporting patients from the well site. We did have some ambulances here. Uh, we had ambulances at the school base as well, uh, but they were trying to get a place where we can take a wounded soldier uh, to have immediate attention on them and we were able to find a, a place at Dr. Salvador Perez Hospital. We, we worked in partnership with them and we were able to bring the, the patients to this facility, stabilize, we have a surgical team here as well, and we could transport them. And coming here, there's very limited resources. However, they are able to make it work. They are able to do these surgeries with, as far as I can tell, um, with similar outcomes. To me, partnership means working together towards a common goal. And during New Horizons 2015, we saw some great examples of that. 
from the engineering projects at the school and the well sites to the medical engagements in the OR and the ER and in TACOA, as well as all of our humanitarian outreach engagements with civil affairs and, and the other opportunities we had. There were just great partnerships throughout New Horizons. Two entities come together and strive for a, uh, a certain goal. Everybody coming together and working as one unit. Being able to help people and have them help back and be able to, to work together to uh, better the whole. Partnership in this specific role, working in the hospital, in the emergency room, was very valuable and it's very meaningful because we're working together as a team. We're learning from each other. We're grateful to have Americans helping us out, especially because we're very short-handed. Partnership is unity, and when the community is united, anything is possible. There's so much to learn. Even, even now, there's still a lot to learn from them, and there's still a lot that we can teach them. It's a collaboration for a common goal. It's to help each other out. And I think that's exactly what we're doing here. Working well with the uh, local Honduran Army and uh, them pulling security for us, going, keeping us safe, uh, doing the, the convoy back and forth from the hotel to the job site. Um, doing the but, patrols around here during the day and the night, um, making sure that, that we're safe, we're all working towards a common goal. We all want to get the, uh, the Hondurans here water and make sure that we are safe while we're doing it. Sharing your knowledge and learning something from them as well to reach a goal. It's being able to work well with others, being able to know what they're doing, what you're doing, and getting along and not butting heads a lot. Uh, it's not just not just Air Force, Marine Corps, it's the local Hondurans and together we're gonna make something good for these kids, you know. You know, two groups of people are two people who are working hand in hand together. It's more like a team effort. Make sure you get the job done, you have everything you need, and, uh, and just, just have each other's back. The thing that struck me most about Honduras was just how gracious the people were. We have been welcomed everywhere we've been from the job sites to the local community, uh, the local businesses that we've been embraced with open arms. And I really was just, uh, I don't know if I was surprised or just truly impressed with just how warm and, and welcoming the people of Honduras have been. I hope that this is not going to be your last visit. I hope that you return and that we can continue working together as partners again. The patients definitely gain a lot from having you here. The whole community thinks that it's great having you here. This has been a really good uh, experience, I have to say. Uh, getting to know each other with other uh, pra uh, medical uh, doctors and uh, how they work and I really appreciate the, uh, that I had the chance to, to, to work with, uh, with uh, these guys because it, it has been really good. In closing, we'd just like to thank you for having thought of our school and we hope it isn't the last time and that we continue collaborating. The schoolhouse that you have built is very well constructed and very strong. It should hold up to all conditions. In fact, some people have been saying to me that if something happens in the community, this could be a shelter because the construction is so good. In the name of our community, I'd like to thank you for these projects. They have been a great benefit for our community and will be a great help in the difficulties we have. More than anything, we'd like to thank all of the exercises that can come to our beautiful country. We would like to thank you for all the work that we do together. More than anything, we appreciate your focus on education, health, and infrastructure. New Horizons Honduras has been a great success, and the impact of what we've done here will be felt for years to come. On the engineering side, the school we built will help educate hundreds of students every year. The wells we drilled will provide fresh drinking water to over 3,000 residents. We saw over 600 patients in the emergency room and either perform surgery or provide a consultation for over 100 uh, patients in the operating room. We delivered thousands of uh, pounds of 
humanitarian goods and distribute them throughout the local area in addition to just engage, personal engagements with the people. It'll be a building that will stand for many, many years after today and uh, I, I hope they use it to the best of their ability and I hope uh, the students go through the school and continue on to be successful in their careers later on. Uh, it's been great, the uh, Honduran uh, government opening up to us, allowing me not to just give them good cleaning drinking water, but also gave me the opportunity to train my guys for future missions for the United States Air Force Well Drilling Department. For sure, I, I think that the, the uh, overall training mission for New Horizons would have been uh, sorely hurt if we weren't able to do a, a humanitarian mission here in this local hospital. We were able to train technicians as they came through and they were able to get some hands-on experience for things that they just don't get to see in the States. And This humanitarian uh, assistance um, exercise brings a little bit of relief to all these native people of Honduras or the areas that we're working. If it's really with civil affairs, because that's what we do, we go and find the local leaders, the people that really need, and we work. It, and we work all uh, together to bring a little bit of less suffering to this area. But success isn't just about numbers. It's about the smiles on the kids' faces and the, and the friendships that we've developed with our Honduran hosts. That's the real success of New Horizons.